In the last video, we took a look at how to find the inverse of a matrix. I worked through a 2x2 two two and a 3x3. Three three. In this one, let's take a look at a couple of other matrices. We'll look at some methods for finding inverses of matrices. Let's take a look at this matrix over here. Suppose I got matrix A is given as the matrix 1, 6, 4, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 5. And I want to find the inverse. Well, we know what to do. Take matrix A, take the identity matrix, and start row reducing. So the original matrix 1, 6, 4, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 1, 2, 5. And the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So the first thing is let's get rid of those two numbers in the first column, that 2 and that negative 1 down the bottom. Yeah, the first one doesn't look bad at all, right? Take row 1 minus row 3, answer goes in row 3, and then take negative 2 row 1 plus row 2, answer goes in row 2. So row 1 remains the same, 1, 6, 4, 1, 0, 0. Row 1 minus row 3. Actually, how about row 1 plus row 3? That'd be better. 1 plus a negative 1 is 0. 6 plus 2 is 8. 4 plus 5 is 9. Um, 1 plus 0 is 1. 0, 1. All right. Next thing we're going to do is take negative 2 row 1, add it to row 2. So I get negative 2, negative 12, negative 8 negative 2, 0, 0. We're going to add that to row 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 12 plus 4 is negative 8. Negative 9, negative 2, 1, and 0. All right. Now, my goal might be let's get rid of the 8 that's down here. Okay. It seems like a relatively simple thing to do. Add row 2 to row 3. Answer goes in row 3. All right, so top row remains the same. 1, 6, 4, 1, 0, 0. Second row remains 0, negative 8, negative 9, negative 2, 1, 0. Now combine the two rows together. 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Oh, but 9 plus negative 9 is also 0. And then I'll get a negative 1. I'll get a 1. And a one. Okay, here's my problem. Down here, that's not a one. And the only way that I can get an inverse is if I have the identity matrix on the left hand side, and there's no identity matrix on the left side. So this matrix does not have an inverse. Okay. Another way we might say it is it's a singular matrix, meaning a matrix that doesn't have an inverse. And you know it doesn't have an inverse because you cannot create the identity matrix on the left-hand side. All right, let's take a look at another 2x2 two two matrix and see if we might find the inverse a different way. So we had looked at 2x2 two two matrices in the last video. Let's look at another one in this video. So let's look at negative 3, 6, 4, 5. And I'd like to find the inverse of that matrix. All right, so let's set up our... Original matrix, negative 3, 6, 4, 5. We'll put the identity matrix next to it, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then we'll row reduce. So the first time around, we'll take 4 times row 1 plus 3 times row 2. Answer goes in row 2. Yeah, I could start dividing through, but I'm not ready for fractions quite yet. So 4 times row 1 gives me negative 12, 6 times 4 is 24, 1 times 4 is 4, and then I got a 0 over here. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, 0, 3. All right, let's add those together. Answer goes in row 2. All right, so the top row stays the same, negative 3, 6, 1, 0. Bottom row, add those together, I get 0, 39, 4, and 3. Okay, I see fractions in our future. If I want to get rid of 
that six that's up there. Maybe I can do that next now. Let's simplify a little bit. So I'm going to get one, divide the top row by negative three. I get one, negative two, negative one third, zero. And then down the bottom here, I get zero, one, four over 39, three over 39, but three over 39 is one thirteenth. So let's leave it like that. All right, this is starting to look a little bit better, except now we want to get rid of this negative two that's up here. How do we do that without reintroducing things down the bottom? Well, if I take two times row two, add it to row one, answer goes in row one, I should be pretty safe. So two times row two is zero, two, eight over 39, two over 13. So let's add those together and put the answer in row one. Row two remains the same. All right, so I'm taking these two numbers here and adding them together. Zero plus one is one. Two minus two is zero. Ooh, eight thirty-ninths minus a third. Well, what is a third in terms of thirty-ninths? It's 13 over 39. So that gives me negative five over 39. And then two thirteenths plus zero is two thirteenths. Down the bottom, I get zero, one, four over 39, one over 13. Hmm. Well, isn't that interesting? Let's take this up one step further. This is now my inverse, right? This side over here is a inverse. Let's write a inverse with a common denominator of 39 because it's fun. So negative five over 39, four over 39, Two thirteenths is going to be six over thirty-nine, and this is three over thirty-nine. All right, pull out that one over thirty-nine, and let me go back and write my original matrix on the left over here. The original matrix A was negative three, six, four, five, and my A inverse matrix is one over thirty-nine times negative five, six, four, three. So they're almost the same numbers, but not quite, and they're in a different order. You notice that when I did the inverse up there, a couple of things switched around. So I now have a negative five and a positive six. But maybe I can actually pull out a negative 1 over 39, and that'll give me a positive 5, a negative 6, and down the bottom a negative 4, and a negative 3. All right, so now I've returned this diagonal here to the same set of numbers. It was a negative 3 and a 5. It's still a negative 3 and a 5, except I switched the order. And then the other two numbers that went in the other direction that negative four, negative six are the same numbers except different signs, right? They were positive four on the bottom left. Now they're negative four on the bottom left. It was positive six on the top right. It was negative six on the top right. So I found part of the inverse by switching the order of the diagonal that goes top left, bottom right. And then I changed the signs of the one that went the other way. But there's this mysterious negative one over 39 that's on the outside. Where did that come from? Go back to your original matrix, the negative 3, 6, 4, 5. Take negative 3 times 5 and subtract 4 times 6. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. 4 times 6 is 24. If you do negative 15 minus 24, you get negative 39. So put that on the bottom of a fraction with a 1 on the top, switch the orders around, and you have an inverse. So there actually is a rule for two by two inverses. So if you want the inverse of a two by two matrix, if the original matrix A goes A, B, C, D like that, then A inverse goes one over A, D minus B, C. So we're gonna take the diagonal going this way and subtract the product going the other way. There is a name for that, by the way, it's called the determinant. So sometimes you'll see the determinant of matrix A that's what that is. For a 2 by 2, it's AD minus BC. 
right? So we do one over the determinant, and then what happens? The bottom left and the top right switch signs, and the other two switch places. So A ends up on the bottom right, and D ends up on the top left. So you can do that for any 2x2 two two matrix. You cannot do that for a 3x3 three three matrix, but for a 2x2, two two, yes. All right, if this matrix has an inverse, then that inverse is unique. By the way, if you come out with a problem where you do the AD minus BC and you come up with an answer of zero, then that's a way that you know that that inverse does not exist. Okay, so if you can find that determinant and that determinant is equal to zero, then that inverse simply does not exist. All right, what can we do with this? Well, suppose I looked at... Remember, we were looking at systems of equations where we had a matrix, and then we had a column of variables, and then some numbers on the other side. So let's call that matrix A times the column vector X equals B. So in two by two terms, I might be looking at like a 2, 4, 3, 5 times X1, X2 equals 4, negative 7. I have no idea if that actually makes an answer or not. So this is matrix A. This is the column vector X. This is the matrix, the column matrix on the other side. And we want to solve for X. Now, what if we multiplied both sides by the inverse of A? So I'm going to multiply both sides by the inverse of A. So I'm going to get A inverse times A times that column vector equals. And then on the other side, I'll do A inverse times B. Well, this A inverse times A, you know what happens when you multiply a matrix by its inverse, you get back the identity matrix. So the identity matrix times X equals A inverse B. Well, multiply anything by the identity matrix and you just get the original matrix back. So you get that column vector X equals A inverse times B. And it turns out that's a way to solve a system of equations is to take the inverse of the matrix times the column vector on the right-hand side, and you'll get x1, x2, or you'll get x1, x2, x3 all the way down. So let's try this particular system. Let's do a 3 by 3, because I say it'll be fun. Suppose I have x sub 1 plus 2x sub 2 plus 3x sub 3 is equal to 1. I've got 2x sub 1 plus 5x sub 2 plus 3x sub 3 is equal to 2, and x sub 1 plus 8x sub 3 is equal to 3. So I can write this in this way. 1, 2, 3, 2, 5, 3, 1, 0, 8. That's matrix A. Here's my column vector x1, x2, x3. And here's my matrix on the other side. That's the B matrix, 1, 2, 3. So I've got A, X equals B. Now we set up here that I could take the inverse of A, multiply it by B, and I'll come up with that column vector. Now, if you remember how the last video ended, I told you to hang on to that inverse matrix. You realize that this matrix A here is the matrix that we spent all that time at the end of the last video finding the inverse for. So I am going to import from my last video the fact that I know A inverse, right? And A inverse is the matrix negative 40, 16, 9, 13, negative 5, negative 3. So I know A inverse from a previous example. And then the last row across is 5, negative 2, negative 1. So take A inverse times B, and that will give me x1, x2, x3. Well, we came this far. What do you say we keep going and finish out this whole thing? So for my first entry, x1 is going to be negative 40 times 1 plus 16 times 2 plus 9 times 3, right? Row 1 by column 1. I'm just writing this here because 
you have to add some bigger numbers. So that's going to be 32. That's going to be 27. So 27 minus 8 is 19. So 19 is the first number. All right, x sub 2 will be 13 times 1 plus negative 5 times 2 plus negative 3 times 3. So that gives me 3 minus 9, which is negative 6. Okay, so there's my x sub 2. And then x sub 3 is going to be 5 times 1, negative 2 times 2, negative 1 times 3. So I get 1 minus 3, negative 2. All right, so that is my x1, x2, x3. How do we know if we're right? Throw it back in the original system. So if I go back to my original system, try it for the, well, try it for the bottom row. That's the easiest one, right? 19, and then 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. 19 minus 16 is 3. Try it for the row in the middle. I get a 38 minus 30, that's 8, minus 6 is 2. Yep, and I'll bet you if you try it in the one up on the top, you get a solution there also. So A inverse times B is the way that you can solve these matrices. Now, it's a handy way of solving big systems, right? If you've got a six by six matrix you want to solve, it's a handy way of solving it, except certainly by that point, you would rely on a calculator or some other kind of input device to find the inverse, because the finding the inverse of A is the big thing. All right, that's the end of inverses for now.